No li és possible una generació devastar tot el temple. Deixem d'oms una tan vigorosa mostra del nostre pas que les generacions que vinguin sentin l'estímul de fer l'altre tant i, d'altra banda, no els lliguem per la resta de l'obra. No és de doltre que jo no pugui acabar el temple. Jo em faré vell, però d'altres vindran rere meu. S'havia de continuar i, naturalment, feia falta l'escultor. Qui pot ser l'escultor? En Josep Maria Subirachs. Josep Maria Subirachs, thinker and versatile artist, sculptor, painter, draftsman and engraver. He is known as a master of his craft and for meticulous attention to detail. He has turned into the most representative artist of the sculptural revolution of Catalonia during the second half of the 20th century. As a sculptor, he has created everything from small format works to big monumental works located in public spaces. In 1986, the construction board of the Sagrada Familia Temple takes a bold decision to entrust Josep Maria Subirax with the construction of the sculptural groups on the Passion Facade. I would like to do a very important part of the façana of the Passion of the Sagrada Familia. I me recordo, això sí que se'm va quedar mirant. <laughs> Devia quedar també una mica perplexa. El, el resultat és de que la resposta va ser que puc anar-hi a viure. The sculptor who is already in the maturity of his artistic career and who from a very young age has expressed his admiration for the work of Antoni Gaudí accepts the challenge. But on the condition that he will be able to carry out the work with complete freedom following his own style. Bé, unes condicions dues. Una, poder viure en el mateix taller de la, de la seva família. I l'altra, la més important, el que fer l'obra no seguint l'estil de Gaudí, sinó el meu estil. Gaudí no volia de cap manera que la façana de la passió a l'escultura fos igual que la del naixement, i la cosa és ben raonable, no és el mateix. Doncs fer la glosa d'un infant que neix que fer la glosa d'un home que el claven a la creu. In order to represent the tragic last two days of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, the sculptor recovers figurative expressionism, looking for the dramatic effect that the topic needed, and proposes a reading that follows an ascending line in an S shape, which is divided into three levels. The narrative, presented in an almost cinematic way, begins then on the left of the lower section with the scene of Jesus' last supper with his disciples, and ends with the burial scene. Frare de la Passió s'ha de tenir en compte que en Gaudí només va deixar fet un dibuix i en els seus col·laboradors els hi va dir jo no faré res més d'aquesta façana. De fet, el que jo haig de representar la façana de la Passió és, com el nom, nom indica, la Passió de Crist, o sigui, els dos darrers dies de la vida de Crist. Uh, la meva inspiració, uh, en fi, de fet, és uh, els evangelis, vull dir que són els documents uh, que hi ha de l'època. Jo ara estic treballant al grup de l'últim sopar, que és un, un tema, en fi, que em té molt preocupat, perquè uh, té una gran tradició dins del món de l'art el cèlebre eh, sopar de Leonardo da Vinci, però ha sigut un tema que ha sigut tractat per molts artistes al llarg de la història i jo l'haig de tornar a fer 
i és un tema que em preocupa perquè té aquesta gran tradició dins el món de l'art. Com sabeu, és una... És una obra que hi haurà 13 figures i composar 13 figures amb pedra no és fàcil, però espero que a fi d'any ja el podré posar a la façana. By representing the Holy Supper, Subidax breaks with the traditional iconography inherited from the Renaissance and creates a closed composition with Jesus facing the apostles and with his back to the spectator. The scene corresponds to the moment in which Jesus turns to Judas Iscariot and says, what you are about to do do quickly. On the right, we see Judas's raised arm, turning his head to escape the looks of the others. He is clenching his fist, which hides the 30 coins of betrayal. At the bottom, there is a sleepy dog that, apart from giving a domestic touch to the scene, is the symbol of fidelity, in opposition to the desertion and betrayal. To the right side of Jesus is his favorite disciple, John, who supports his head on the table, deeply saddened. To the left side is Peter, identified by the inverted cross on his chest, and beside him, his brother Andrew. Then come three apostles, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Philip, and another group of four. Jew Tadeus, with his hand on his face, and next to him the evangelist Matthew, followed by Simon and James the Minor. Jesus explains to the disciples what will happen, and they seem uncomfortable on having found out about everything that will have to occur. He va dissenyar, feia tot el dibuix de tot el que era la passió, i llavors feia uns bocetos petits i quan ho tenia clar feia el model, que són aquests que tenim aquí al darrere, a un tamany aquí, el tamany que sortien. Llavors d'aquest model jo seccionava per peces els blocs en què s'havia de fer, ens els tallaven aquí a les màquines i llavors els realitzàvem. L'obra, tal com jo la faig, és una obra molt cerebral, és a dir, molt pensada. Primer és el dibuix, el dibuix és el primer diguem, pas que l'idea que està, diguem, presonera o amagada en el cap de l'artista, pas es materialitza. És en el sobre el paper, en el dibuix, després es fan uns bossets a petit tamany, ja a tot volum, després més gran uns models i finalment la matèria definitiva. Això és el procés, diguem, de creació de l'escultura, tal com jo, diguem, la faig. The prayer door in the Gethsemane Garden is located on the left side of the facade, between the Lord's Supper and Judas's betrayal. The theme of the Gethsemane door is narrated in zigzag form, from the left to the right side. In the top section, the space dedicated to the sky is represented with the full moon, image of the night and omen of death. Next, on the right section, the main motif appears, Jesus praying before being arrested. On the left side, the brother apostles John and James the Greater are stretched out, sleeping. Below, a short, sculpted poem related to this passage can be seen. Continuing towards the right, we find Peter asleep with his head on a stone. In the lower section there is a prism, allusion to the Dürer etching melancholy. To symbolize the sadness that comes from the scene reflected in the door, the background is full of prints and allegorical details, which give the impression of the passage of time. They are like fossils attached to the matter. On the right, 
stands the figure of the labyrinth as a symbol of man's loneliness. And to the left side, the doorknob stands out, an emptiness scratching the matter. To highlight the most important topic, the sculptor frames Jesus' figure in a ceiling relief with the detail of an olive branch. Splendid work that resembles a goldsmith's work, then uses different finishes and textures with relief and empty spaces with symbolic significance. Totes aquestes portes que ens ha deixat extraordinàries de la Sagrada Família són com grans llibres amb aquestes tipologies, crec que tenen una una qualitat i una força extraordinària. És que ell sap juntar la, la funcionalitat d'una porta, una entrada, amb l'escultura. En la porta del Getsemaní hi ha un element que Subirax fa servir sovint en la seva obra escultòrica, que és l'al·lusió al gravat de la malenconia del Brec Durer, concretament la pedra i aquesta pedra ens aboca aquesta tristor, la malenconia, exactament, aquesta buidor que sent Jesucrist abandonat dels seus deixebles. És per això que Subirax ha sabut triar un element absolutament remarcable en el sentit que identifica molt bé aquesta tristor eh, profundament humana i alhora profundament metafísica, remarcada també per l'element lluna que apareix a la part superior de la porta i que ens dona aquesta imatge de nit, de desolació i d'abandonament de Jesucrist pels seus deixebles. Subirac says, I do not believe too much in inspiration or intuition. I believe in reflection and work. L'art és contrari a la natura, com artificial és contrari a natural. L'home fa jardins en lloc de selves, estàtues en lloc de pedres i piràmides en lloc de muntanyes. Produeix molta obra, treballa molt. De bon dematí, quan jo arribava aquí, potser havia fet una litografia i tornava a treballar. O sigui, treballava les 24 hores del dia. I tant, en fi, la meva vida sempre està molt relacionada amb la meva professió i jo dic que fins i tot com com vaig a un concert o vaig al cine, continuo la meva obra perquè em serveix enriquiment per tal de després treballar el meu personal. Que si no hi ha aquesta riquesa de, de, de matisos eh, en la vida, difícilment eh, hi haurà aquesta riquesa de matisos en l'obra. També. El tema en una obra d'art no és el més important, però naturalment també té la seva importància i sobretot jo crec que l'obra religiosa eh, encaixa molt bé amb l'obra d'art, perquè tots dos apunten cap a uns fins metafísics. És a dir, la, el tema religiós és un tema que de tota la història ha sigut sempre un tema preferent per als artistes, perquè precisament eh, tots dos, com he dit, doncs apunten cap a aquests fins superiors, cap a aquests fins metafísics, que l'art, doncs, eh, hi s'hi troba també. Això és eh, l'actitud que jo prenc davant del tema religiós, és sobretot aquesta espècie de, de posició que l'home té, que no tenen els altres animals, aquesta posició que té de coneixement de la mort. És a dir, l'home és un animal que sap que s'ha de morir i llavors es defensa i crea doncs, eh, eh, coses per eh, lluitar contra aquesta idea bàsicament eh, inicialment negativa i serveix doncs, per poder superar aquest trauma de la mort. I llavors la religió, que també apunta cap al mateix, doncs s'hi acopla molt bé amb el fet artístic, ja que ell també és una defensa contra la mort. In the spring of 1992, he placed the group of the betrayal of Judas on the Mount of Olives. The soldiers are hidden, ready to arrest Jesus. The figures, to suggest that the scene takes place at night, remain deliberately unfinished with their outlines unclear. Peter, stretched out on the floor, wakes up and draws his sword. 
Beside him, an olive tree trunk is cut in such a way that it has the shape of an ear, Malchus's ear, the high priest's servant. Further away, we see Jesus and Judas in the moment when he gives Jesus his treacherous kiss. The approach of Judas, accentuated by the curve of the tunic folds, contrasts with Jesus' distant and rigid attitude. Behind Judas, the devil is represented in the shape of a snake as the instigator of the abominable act. There is also one of the facade's most popular motifs, the cryptogram. Made up of 16 numbers with 310 different combinations that always add up to 33, the age of Jesus. Just at the intersection between the arcade mullion and the lintel, there is a stone block engraved in such a manner that it complements the theme of flagellation and links it with the figures on the way to Calvary. It is a relatively small piece within the large retable of the facade panorama, but it has an important meaning and illuminates the entire sculptural composition. It is Alpha and Omega. The use of the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet so common a symbol in the Romanesque. An attempt has been made to recreate this by making the shape of the Omega the same as the Alpha, inverted and negative, which gives a clear and accurate meaning to this ancient symbol, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of all creation. In its simplicity, this stone synthesizes in the abstract all that is narrated in the west facade in a figurative manner. Subidak says, in his work, the negative of a figure is like the memory of a character that is not there, but which has left its mark. Subidak's work, unlike abstract art, recovers form and content. In the same way that structuralism, as opposed to philosophical nihilism and political tautologies, appears positively as a formal affirmation. To obtain this, the sculptor applies rules of opposition, inversion or symmetry, as Levi Strauss does to explain the transformation of myths from one culture to another. Like the philosopher who gathers and translates into a new language the changes that are felt in the spirit of the time, the artist, with a sharper sensitivity than others, perceives these changes and captures them aesthetically. Form, for the artist, is a type of alphabet used to construct a narrative. Subidax reminds us, I had an abstract period. But I realized that abstract art was very difficult to understand, and I have returned to a new figurative, precisely in order to load my work with content. The flagellation represents Christ's loneliness. In order to emphasize such loneliness, Subidax placed this scene between that of Judas's betrayal and Peter's denial. Christ is radically alone, even more so than when he is on the cross, because there, at least, he is with his mother, the disciple he loved, and some other friends. But here, tied to a column, he is alone among his persecutors. Three steps represent the three days leading up to the resurrection. The cane and the knot, which recall the mockery and torture that Christ suffered, are two highly significant elements. The ill-fitting column is made of four tambours representing the four lines of the cross, which simultaneously represent the old world that Christ came to shatter. He changes the course of history and, therefore, 
while the column is the instrument of his martyrdom, he, like a new Samson, finally breaks it. The instruments of martyrdom have been treated in a very realistic way, contrasting with the more expressionist figure of Christ, deliberately non-finite, as it is the image of a newly emerging world. This work is five meters high and is made of travertine stone. Finally, it is worth mentioning a fortuitous event. The appearance on breaking the travertine block of a small palm fossil. Certainly an extraordinary event, especially bearing in mind that the palm is the emblem of martyrdom. Aquí baix va voler deixar el bloc, tal i com surt de la pedrera, que encara es veuen les barrinades de separació de la penya, i després també els detalls que donaven de si mateix la pedra, no? que respectava tots els forats i les textures de les diferents formes que tenia el travertí, com són tota sèrie de quecorcs, i les, les, les petxades de l'eina. No? Aquí un punxó molt brutalista, Després aquí hi ha un punxó més afinat, una buixarda i després el polit final, el, el polit final de la matèria. No? I sobretot la conservació del que eren les qualitats pròpies de la pedra, com és aquest margalló que va sortir, un margalló fòssil, que ell ho va respectar i, i va semblar com si fos ja una mena de do diví, no? que li sortís això dins d'una escultura que anava en una església. Aquestes portes són el, el text que ha servit diguem, d'inspiració per tota la façana. És a dir, són els trossos de, de la Bíblia, de l'Evangeli, que diguem, on, eh, jo m'he inspirat per fer tota la, tota la façana. La Porta de la Passió es va tardar vuit mesos aproximadament per, per fer la, la fundició. Amb aquest molló de silicona, amb el següent pas, és ficar una capa de cera que reprodueix fidelment l'escultura que havia fet l'artista. O sigui, tenim el mateix que teníem, però en aquest cas amb cera. es porta a temperatura de fusió, que són uns 1200 graus, 1250. I llavors se fa la, la colada, que es diu la bronza, que és dintre el, el motllo de refractari se li tira el bronze. Aguanta, no, no, que aguanta, aguanta. Aguanta. Vale, vale, Pato. i ha ocupat el bronze tota la cavitat que havia deixat el, el, a l'espai de la cera. Una vegada s'ha refredat, a l'endemà es desmunta l'encofrat i recuperes com si diguéssim l'escultura en bronze. La netegem, se li aplica un, un, llavors, un tractament de la superfície per treure les imperfeccions que puguin haver quedat de la fundició. Les, les portes de la façana principal estan fetes amb 24 trossos i aquests 24 trossos llavors es munten 12, fan una fulla de la porta i 12 fan la, l'altra fulla. Tota aquesta porta va muntada amb, un, amb una estructura metàl·lica per donar la consistència i que porta el mecanisme que permet que es puguin obrir les portes. Això serà aquestes portes com estaran posades, com un immens llibre obert, 
eh, el que es podrà llegir, eh, serà un monument al llibre, el llibre per excel·lència que era la Bíblia. Writing has formed the human mind in a different way to pre-alphabetic man. Subidak says, surely it is in the art of the sculpture where you see most clearly the union of the idea and matter. L'art és la unió de la idea i la matèria. Penso que una obra d'art ha d'envellir com una ruïna, no pas com una ferralla. Per això procuro esculpir amb materials que resisteixin bé el pas del temps. L'artista no lluita amb la matèria, dialoga amb ella. He always believed that the central double door should synthesize the entire work of the facade. He finally found the theme he considered to be suitable, to reproduce the text of the gospel illustrated by the sculptural groups. The two huge doors, separated by the mullion, are like two immense open books. The background texture, with over 8,000 letters melted in bronze, will not detract attention from the flagellation figure which is located in front. The main entrance of the west facade are the two big central doors, each of which consists of two leaves covered from top to bottom with almost 10,000 letters sculpted in relief. The door on the left side reproduces fragments of Matthew's Gospel, and the door on the right continues the narrative but following the text of John the Evangelist. Apart from the shadows, which he obtains with the contrast of the relief of the letters to highlight words or specific phrases, the sculptor has gilded the bronze. In this way, he has highlighted a disturbing question formulated by Pontius Pilate. And what is truth? En Gaudí no havia mai dit que les portes serien el text de l'Evangeli de Joan i de Mateu. Mai. És una idea d'en Subirax. El Gaudí és l'artista més extraordinari que ha tingut al nostre país, el més gran creador, sens dubte, un home verdament interessantíssim perquè acaba el procés de l'arquitectura de volta, que va començar amb els romans, inicia tècniques com el collage en els seus mosaics, el collage que tant han empleat els pintors del segle XX, fa unes escultures, sobretot en les formes abstractes, interessantíssimes, com les que hi ha en el terrat de la Pedrera, és a dir, és el més gran creador que ha tingut el nostre país, sens dubte. There are three women in the sculptural group, the figurative representation of the three times that Peter was questioned. One of them is pointing to the apostle and says, this man was also with Jesus. A rooster, sculpted in the same stone, looks towards the rising sun and crows. Peter's crouched figure, hiding away, wrapped up in a blanket, is an allegory of his denial. Opposite this is the high priest's house, which Jesus has been made to enter. It is like a labyrinth, and as was the custom with many medieval cathedrals, it symbolizes the path that the innocent was forced to follow when he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. El laberint és una mirada cap al món clàssic, aquell món clàssic que Subirax coneix tan bé i que tant estima, és òbviament el laberint del Minotaure a Creta que condueix una vegada més a la mort. The bronze door between the denial of Peter and Ece Homo has the martyrdom of Jesus as its main theme. Once he has been crowned with thorns, he is given a cane scepter and is mocked and beaten. We can also see Jesus standing before Herod Antipas and the Roman governor in a representation of the saying, from Herod to Pilate. 
The lower part of the door shows the instrument of heather faithfully reproduced in bronze with which Jesus was beaten. In the background, with small markings, is a passage from Salvador Espriu's poem, La Pelle de Brau, which begins, Sometimes it is required and ordained that a man should die for a people, but a people entire should never die for one man alone. And finally, a quotation from the Divine Comedy. Wherefore, if my desire is to be ended in this miraculous and angelic temple that has for confines only love and light. The last group in the lower right section is made up of ten figures and represents the trial in the judgment hall divided into two scenes separated by a column with an imperial eagle above. The first of these is the Governor Pilate, hesitating and burdened by the whole problem he has to solve, while Jesus is introduced. Ece Omo. The stone supporting Jesus cracks under his feet, as an omen of the approaching earthquake. But the most remarkable aspect of this part is the fact that when we look at the work, we become part of the scene, taking the place of the Jewish people. Thus, we are also protagonists, becoming involved in the most significant moments prior to the crucifixion of Jesus. Pilate renta les mans però no hi posa els que criden crucifica'l. Perquè som tots que continuem dient mata. The second scene shows Pilate washing his hands. In 1996, Subidax finished the sculpture of Procula Claudia. It represents Pilate's wife leaving the scene and entering her home, greatly concerned about the situation her husband was immersed in. While Pilate was in court, his wife sent him this message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. This character, to a certain extent secondary, has aroused interest for she brings a human and feminine touch to the deeply tragic and extremely tense moment when Jesus is brought before the people. The sculptor, who stoically supported the people's declarations against his work, reveals, Artwork is never absolutely free. It is created at a precise moment in history and often in a particular place. This imposes a certain conditioning. Freedom relapses into choosing the best possible solution, the one that is closer to oneself. Tot. La seva família no és més que la història dels pobles, que tots els pobles tenen moments d'eufòria, de moments que tot va bé o que sembla que va bé, i moments de desencant. Es discutia si un monument doncs, inacabat es podia acabar, i la seva família era un monument inacabat, però era també un encàrrec arquitectònic en marxa. Uh, se li ha fet política des d'un punt de vista estètic i s'ha posat en controvèrsia, sobretot, i no ens enganyem, per la seva intervenció a la Sagrada Família. Perquè se suposa que un temple està fora, fora de l'espai del temps. El món modern, en general, uh, ha independitzat uh, l'escultura. L'ha independitzat uh, arrencant-la d'aquesta vinculació arquitectònica i uh, deixant-la com un element purament autònom. El fet que, i 
diguéssim, en Josep Maria Subirax, hagi tornat a incorporar el treball escultòric a l'arquitectura i, a més a més, a la gran arquitectura, em sembla també una de les seves aportacions bàsiques i claus. En aquest cas, sí, hi ha específicament en el món de l'escultura. Era normal que hi hagués una gent que estiguessin a favor i una gent de continuar i uns altres que no, però el que no hi ha dubte és que Gaudí és conscient que l'obra durarà segles i fa les coses pensant en això. At the beginning of the second level are the scenes of the path up to Calvary. The first sculptural group on the right side represents Jesus who has fallen to the ground and Simon of Cyrene who helps him carry the cross. We can also see his mother together with Mary of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. His aim is that these figures should have a kinetic effect for they are the same figure that has been repeated three times at different levels in an attempt to represent movement. This group of 17 figures represents the second time Jesus falls and the moment when he meets the women from Jerusalem, including Veronica, who is presenting Jesus' image. This image has the optical effect of always turning in the direction of the observer. The representation of Veronica might be surprising due to her lack of features. This is because this beautifully symbolic character has no basis in history, but is the fruit of a legend created following the Vera Icona, true icon, which the word Veronica comes from, worshipped in Rome since the 8th century. The face which should be noticed is that of Jesus, carved in negative in order to suggest the mark left upon the cloth. The size and treatment of Jesus' face is quite unlike that of the other figures, thus giving the impression that it has not been carved, but rather that it is the true face of the Messiah. It is worth explaining as a curious detail that the shape of the soldiers' helmets evokes Gaudí, as these recall the form of chimneys in La Pedrera, Casa Milá. In a clearly postmodern attitude, Subirax has taken advantage of this symbol of Gaudí in order to give these characters a warlike, impersonal and fierce appearance. On the left side is a figure detached from the scene who is observing and writing. This represents the evangelist who, as a chronicler, describes what is happening at the moment. As homage to the great architect of the Sagrada Familia, he wanted to give this figure the face of Antoni Gaudí, inspired by the well-known photograph of the Corpus procession in 1924. Longinus, a Christian martyr from the first century and Isaurian origin, is identified as the soldier who plunged his spear into Jesus' side and later converted to Christianity. We see him mounting a horse, piercing with his lance the right side of the temple's facade. As if it were a premonition, the soldier's lance crosses the right side of the facade. Particularly surprising is the incline that profiles the body of the knight, the horse's leg and the lance, following the diagonal of the atrium columns. In the first group on the upper level, following the S of the root, taken over the last two days of Jesus' life on earth, we see the soldiers gambling for his clothes. The table they are playing on has the shape of an astragal, the lamb bone that in all likelihood was the origin of the game of dice.
In the center of the top of the atrium is the imposing image of Jesus nailed to the cross. The crucified body appears naked, hanging from his arms, with his feet unnailed and his body inclined into the void, leaning over the spectator. The cross is made of iron beams, and the shape of the beam, seen front on, is like an I, the first letter of the sign, Inri. On the left side is the group made up of his mother and John. Further away is Mary of Cleophas. At the foot of the cross is Mary Magdalene. The distribution of these figures forms an imaginary line which ends in a skull. This is the only sculptural element on the other side of the cross and has been given a more realistic treatment so as to suggest the entrance to the sepulcher. Despite the central axis of the cross, the composition has been left deliberately asymmetrical in order to give the scene a greater atmosphere of tragedy. Farther above, executed in bronze, hangs the torn veil of the temple, like a canopy covering the entire scene with its solemnity. The last group of the Passion Facade is made up of four figures, Christ, his mother, Joseph of Arimathea, and Nicodemus. The body of Jesus, fully shrouded, is placed in the tomb by his two friends. At the entrance of the sepulcher, Mary is kneeling down, watching the scene in deep sorrow. The cracked wall symbolizes that the drama has unfolded just as the scripture foretold. At the same time, it is the sign of the earthquake that occurred at the moment of the Son of God's death. There is an egg carved above Mary's head, a symbol used by Piero della Francesca in a painting which is located in the Breda Museum in Milan and in the Virgin of Port Ligat by Salvador Dalí. The egg replaces the conventional halo, which has traditionally crowned holy figures. And as well as the visual power it conveys, thanks to its perfection, it is the symbol of the resurrection. In the Gaudí project, the temple's towers are dedicated to the Twelve Apostles. On the Passion facade, the towers correspond to the Apostles James the Minor, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Philip. All the towers bear the names of the apostles in relief. To represent the Holy Spirit, Subidak started with the traditional form of the dove but he has stylized this so as to render it abstract, as it is a profoundly metaphysical subject. In the bridge linking the two central towers of the facade, 60 meters up, is the gilt bronze figure representing the ascension. Però més amunt hi ha l'ascensió. L'ascensió sí, és una figura de 5 metres d'alçada, que es veu petita, perquè s'ha de donar la sensació i no està posada al centre, en seguiràs la posa decantada perquè es vegi que va enfilant-se amunt fins que desapareixerà sota un núvol i hem d'esperar que torni. L'art, pel caràcter intemporal de l'obra i pel seu valor metafísic, és el que veritablement suposa la mort. 